Hey guys, I'm excited to share with you how to make this awesome lighthouse card today. Now this lighthouse has got a little special surprise and secret for whoever you give it to, and it's a light up card. Isn't that so awesome? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the light up feature. Now this particular card was made using the high tide photopolymer stamp set from Stampin' Up. It's got some lighthouses and birds and it's just a general awesome stamp set that I fell in love with. So available for only 26 bucks. The other thing you're going to need for this card is the light up components. Now for this recently uh, for Christmas I got this awesome starter kit from Chibitronics. Uh, this is available on Amazon. It's just a, a $30 Amazon Prime kit. Now this is a great starting off point if you're new to circuits or doing cards. Um, now you can actually do a little cheaper if you're doing a bunch of cards, um, buying the pieces separately. But this was kind of my starting off point and they did an awesome job with the instruction book and just making it simple and easy to use. Uh, the other thing, uh, difference in this video versus uh, what their standard kits have which I mean it's got the lights and it's got the batteries but their kits include this copper tape for conducting the circuit well I found that on doing some of my cards doing the copper tape was a little tricky doing corners um, and curves so instead of the copper tape but if you prefer the copper tape you can definitely use that but instead of that for this video I'm going to be using the circuit scribe conductive ink pen now this is also available on Amazon for about 20 bucks and one pin can last you quite a few cards. I haven't run out of mine yet. Um, and it basically works just like an ink pen. Instead of the copper lines, you're just drawing uh, conductive ink lines. So it's really great for curves and just very, very easy to use. So that's the other thing we're going to be using in this video. And then also we're going to be using uh, Chibitronics white uh, circuit lights. If you've got the starter kit, it comes with some of these uh, circuit stickers. I've already used quite a few of them. Uh, but for 30 bucks, you get 30 stickers. So it's about a dollar a sticker. And this is another Amazon Prime item. And then the last thing is you're going to need a battery to charge your little light. And so for this video, I'm using the Blue Dot lithium batteries. Uh, this is specifically CR1220. And 25 count is a little over 550. Uh, not a prime item, but a really good bulk deal. Um, if you prefer, you can also do your standard... Uh, bigger size batteries as well. These are the CR2032 and what comes in the kit. But I found for cards that it's just easier to do the smaller battery as it doesn't take up as much space. Okay. So now that you have all your different uh, <laughs> basic info, we'll get into the paper measurements and make this card. So we just scoot that over. Okay, so for this card, I did a little bit of a, a non-standard size. I went with a, it's kind of a square card. So it's cut at four and a quarter by eight and a half. So it's basically a four and a quarter by four and a quarter square in the front. All right, and then also you will need a piece of Whisper White in four inches by four inches. And this is for your uh, background piece. And then you will also need a piece in Sahara sand. You could also do crumb cake as well. And this is in two inches by four inches. Okay. Uh, the last thing you'll need is uh, some scrap of a uh, whisper white to stamp and cut out your lighthouse and also for whatever sentiment that you want to do. All right. So now you got all those measurements. Let's get started. Okay. Move that out of the way. So we're basically going to use the Sahara sand as a mask and we're going to be sponging the background first. So I use my Knight of Navy ink for this. Now if you want to do a different uh, color of ink you could as well. Pool Party, Marina Mist, all would work just as well. Uh, it would just be a different shade of blue but I really liked how the Knight of Navy worked with the Knight of Navy card base. So that's why I ended up going that route. So you're going to take your piece and just kind of decide where you want the horizon line to be. And this is a, a little wedge out of one of Stampin' Up! Stamping Sponges. I, uh, it comes in a big circle and I kind of cut it into little wedges and just label it. So 
it lasts a little longer that way but just so you know and if you're not a big fan of the stamping sponge you can also do the sponge daubers as well for sponging and they look like this they're little foam things that go on the end of your finger and you just tap tap and sponge as well so there's two different sponging options uh, just depends and these are a pack of five for five bucks so all right I'm go ahead and get my sponge going here oh, sorry if the camera shakes a little all right just like that so nice blue sky if you can see that all right and then I'm going to take my mask and flip it that out of the way covered those okay and I'm, I tend to like to have just a tiny bit of a little white horizon line I mean you don't have to but you do want to differentiate from the sky and the water so we're gonna flip it and you could also mask with post-it notes as well it's just this is kind of a handy uh, piece You don't have to go all the way to the bottom, but you want to go at least past the halfway point when you're doing the water. Okay, you take it off, you've got the sky, you've got the water, you can add more or less kind of per what you'd like. Okay, the next thing is this stamp set also has a really cool kind of a water stamp so we're going to use that next on a block and just ink up that Knight of Navy again and we're going to stamp it on top of the water and that really helps differentiate the water from the sky and we're going to do it a couple times kind of here there and yonder uh, you can do a few more on top kind of give it very wavy turbulent looking seas going on just be careful not to stamp your sky with the watermarks and if you want you could even put your mask back on if you're worried you might accidentally do it okay there we go i think that looks pretty good there's a close up there all right so we've got our sky we've got our water so put our knight of navy up so the next thing is I really loved the look of these birds flying away. So for that one, there's actually a really cool uh, bird stamp set. So we're going to use that with some basic black. Let's see. There it is. And this is the archival basic black ink pad. Now, because I'm not going to do all of them, because um, that last one is a little big, you're just going to ink up the ones that you want so just those last couple on the end so you don't have to you know waste the ink and do all of them okay we'll just tap those corner there Ta -da. so some cute little birds all right so now we've got our basic background done so we're going to go ahead and do our sand and so pull out our Sahara sand piece now you can cut it first or stamp it first it doesn't really matter which way we're going to go ahead and flip to the other side that doesn't have all the ink on it <laughs> and I'm going to grab the Sahara sand ink pad so this is going to be a tone on tone look and the set also comes with a really cool kind of sandy shore uh, stamp so I'm going to use that with the Sahara sand ink and just kind of tap it and for this one I'm just going to kind of ink it up all over just kind of a messy sandy look not really a right or wrong way on this one just kind of more or less depending on your preference okay okay so da -da, it's all all sandy on see nice and quick we're just moving right along okay so then I'm gonna take my well actually yeah I'll go ahead and do this now so I'm gonna take my paper snips 
and you can see how it's going to line right up on top of that piece that we've just done. So we're going to kind of cut a uh, curve. I mean, if you want a straight beach line, you can, but I kind of personally feel it looks a little better with just a bit of a curve into it. So that's what we're going to do is just kind of trim. And depending on how messy your edge is, this kind of cleans it up. Now for this particular card, you want to have a higher side on the right than the left. Um, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, and, you know, just maybe a little dip in the center. So I'm just going to take this and just curve it out. And keep in mind, you can always trim it more later, but you can't put it back. So here you go. So nice little, little swoop in there. The next thing is I'm going to stamp my lighthouse. So I've got a little scrap right here. I'll actually flip that upside down. So I've got my lighthouse stamp set right here. And the for the lighthouse, I'm going to be stamping it in Smoky Slate and also in Cajun Craze. I really liked how the colors complemented with the Knight of Navy. It really worked well, in my opinion. Um, so... So this is a two-step stamping. So we've got our lighthouse outline. I'm going to straighten it up a little bit. There we go. Then we're going to stamp in the smoky slate. Just right on that scrap. Ta-da! And then we're going to do the same thing stamping our little design and this is kind of the the stripe look now yes my stamp is a little uh, red don't be alarmed your photopolymers will stain a little over time and i have definitely used mine quite a bit recently so this is the cajun craze okay so ink that guy up all right, now for lining this up, you know, I recommend, you see there's that little bump on the, oh, my video's not too dark, okay, there we go, um, that little bump just under the basket, so I recommend kind of lining that up with the bottom of the basket, and then you can also kind of eyeball the bottom and a little bit of the top. Now, what's nice about this stamp set is even if it's not perfectly aligned, oh, I didn't ink it all the way, um, even if it's not perfectly aligned, uh, it's a very forgiving um, art pattern. And what I mean by forgiving is it has kind of that artsy look. So even if it's not perfectly aligned, uh, you're going to cut it out anyway, and it'll be fine. So here we go. Ta-da! So there we have our basic lighthouse. Now for the sake of time, uh, well, the next step is basically cutting out said lighthouse, but for the sake of time, I went ahead and cut out this one. Just got it held on with some washi tape. So there we go. Ta-da, <laughs> one lighthouse cut out. Okay. So next thing we're gonna do is take our lighthouse and glue the base of the lighthouse to the left side of our sandy um, beach line. Move my post-it notes out of the way. Okay. All right, so I'm going to grab my liquid glue, and you could do any of the adhesives, and you only need just a little bit on that bottom. Just like that. Okay. And you can kind of see where he'll be once you... Uh, Stick it on. thing I like with the liquid glue is you have a little bit of wiggle time, so you can adjust it a bit if you want. So I'm putting him down a little more. Okay, so here we have our basic lighthouse look. A little, little wet still. But, okay, so the next thing you're going to need is just a standard really good pencil. Uh, any kind, it just needs a really good eraser. Uh, so what you're going to do is line it up. Take your lighthouse and line it up with the bottom of your cardstock so you'll see exactly where it is. And holding it down, you're going to trace the edge of that beach line with your pencil. You want it to be a nice 
line that's dark enough that you can see it and then we're basically making guidelines for our circuits because you don't want to lay down a circuit and then have it kind of poking out um, kind of defeats the purpose of the hidden light surprise so be sure to get the sides of the lighthouse and then you also want to get kind of the basket and a little bit of the top. You don't have to do the very top, uh, but just the sides and the edges of that basket. Ooh, oh, chip my pencil. Okay. So I don't know if you can see my pencil lines. There we go. Okay. Very good. All right. So now comes the fun part everybody's been waiting for, the light up part. So for this card, I only need one of the little batteries, and these are really nice. You just kind of pop them out of the back. So take this one, pop them out. So there's my tiny little battery. Okay. Then I'm also going to take my little circuit scribe pen, and um, the ink does slide back and forth, so be sure you don't store it upside down. All right. So using, you've got your nice guide up here, and you've got the size of your battery. Uh, you're going to take the battery as your guide, and you're going to fold up this corner. Now, let me hold this up a little higher so you can see. You want to fold up this corner uh, where it's not above the, your guide line, but it does need to be bigger so that it covers the battery. And you'll see why in a minute. So we're just basically going to use that as a guide. Okay, that looks good enough. Fold it up. We take our bone folder, make a nice sharp crease, just like that. So we've got kind of that little flap, just like that. And it's below my pencil line, so you're not going to see it. Okay? Keep in mind, this is all, this flap is going to be hidden by this layer, so you're not going to see it, but you need to have the fold over for the circuits and to hold the battery. Okay. So now we've got that, and for the sake of this video, we're gonna just pencil. I'm gonna draw a line so you can kind of see where my crease is for reference. I don't necessarily recommend drawing the line, but for you guys, so you can see. I'm gonna do that. Okay. So now we've got that. We're gonna take our circuit pin. This is really awesome. Um, if you don't have the circuit pin, you can do the uh, copper lines instead. You're just gonna have a trickier time with the curve up to the lighthouse. So what we're gonna start with is just a nice big circle. And you wanna be sure, uh, especially when you're doing your first couple, to go a little more thick on the ink than uh, you may think you need, just to be sure that you've got a good layer on there. So it needs to be a dot that is about the size of your battery. Um, you can go a little bigger if you want, but really at least the size of your battery and you're good. So once you've done your circle, you're gonna fold it over and kind of rub it a little bit and that'll show you, well, if it's still wet, it may not still be wet, okay. It'll show you about uh, where you need to do another circle on the other side. Now they don't have to line up 100%, but you want them pretty close because this is gonna be the bottom of the battery and this is gonna be on the top of the battery to kind of complete that circuit, okay? So you've got your two dots. Now you're gonna draw a line from your first dot, I'm going to go up, and keep keeping in mind your guidelines so that you don't um, draw your line where it's going to be seen. You're going to draw a line, go up the side of your lighthouse. Now you want to end your line about at the basket or a little bit above, so right about in, in there. So you want it to be right in that top part of the lighthouse so that when you put the sticker down, the light is actually coming from the top part of the lighthouse and not down here, because um, that doesn't make as much sense if it's uh, lighting from behind. So I want it to go up the top, and then at the end of your line, you're gonna make kind of like, I don't know, maybe like a, a little round oval egg. And that's just easier to line up the sticker if you have a good circle, oval. There we go, you can see that? Okay, now just uh, opposite of that, we're gonna do another big oval. Now, and we're gonna draw our next line. Key thing, your um, two lines should not touch. You're gonna be just parallel of each other. 
you take this line, go back down, and this one is going to end at your other circle. Now because you're going over that crease, I recommend you be sure to go a little extra heavy on that crease just to be sure that it gets it good. Okay. sure that I got a good line for you guys. Okay, that should be good. Let me double check. So you can see we've got our two lines, we've got our two dots, and we've got a little spot for our sticker ready to go. Okay, a little thicker right there. Okay, so now next thing we need, of course, is our little LED sticker. So I'm going to pull one out here. So these are really tiny. And when I say tiny, really tiny. Look how little these guys are. So these are three separate lights. And it's just a peel and stick sticker. Now, when you place it, be careful not to uh, touch the underside of the stickiness. Um, they're really more one-time use. And if you take away the stickiness, they won't sit as well. So just be careful of that. But you're going to peel one off. Carefully peel one off. Yep. Okay. And you want to make sure that the pointed side is to the right. It's going to touch that first line and sit straight down. So you want, let me put it down and I'll show you guys. Okay. So you want the point side to hit this, uh, your first contact on the side and then the back of it to hit the back side. Okay. So it doesn't really matter how far apart your lines are. You don't want them just too close that they're actually going to touch, but you do want to be sure that you've got contact on one on each side. And it matters that yes, you do need the pointed side to the right. That's the negative contact, which goes with the negative side of the battery. Okay. All right. So now that we've got our basic circuit, we're going to test it. So we're going to place our battery on top just like that, uh, with the words facing up. Okay, and then we're going to fold it over and tap it. And of course, for my video, it doesn't want to work. Make sure I got it lined up. Okay, so troubleshooting. Let's say you get to this point and you test it and it's not working. A couple things to try. So first thing is you need to be sure that the contact is really on there really well. So sometimes I like to press it down with my nail just to be sure that it is on there really good. Okay. The other thing you need to look at is your lines. Are there any um, spaces or holes where maybe you could have drawn it a little thicker so maybe the co conductiveness is not traveling through very well. So I'm gonna fill in my lines just a little better here. So those are the two things I, I would start off with if it doesn't work right away. Okay. And the other thing you need to check too is that the top and the bottom of the battery is touching both the bottom circle and the top circle because if they aren't, oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Because if they aren't, then it won't um, conduct. Okay, so now we've got it and we go touch it and it lights up. So that is awesome. That is where we want it to be. All right, so the next thing is to basically support that tiny battery because right now it will slide all over the place if we don't hold it in place. So what I recommend for this is Stampin' Up's got these foam adhesive strips. They are amazing. Use these all the time for shaker cards, um, just kind of, you know, different little details and you get so much with it. Now for this, we don't need hardly any at all because uh, it is a tiny battery. So we're going to take our paper snips and we're going to snip just tiny little pieces and basically frame our battery with it and this will hold it in place. So I'm just cut a few real quick. Okay. So peel. Okay, and be sure that the battery is in a good spot. Peel that and stick. And also keep in mind, too, when you're placing your um, dots and your battery, you need to still be able to fold this over. So don't put it too close to that fold. Um, otherwise, you're not going to be able to fold it over. Okay, there's another one. 
And the other thing I'm going to recommend too is you're placing the foam dimensionals. Oops, stay or just anything with this project, I would watch putting things on top of the conductive lines. Um, I mean, you're not going to get zapped or anything, but uh, you don't want anything that's going to affect the conductivity, and you don't want that to be the reason that your card is not lighting up. Okay, there we go. So we do a little shake test. He's not going anywhere. And then we're going to peel off the top of the little dimensional strips. Now, because the battery is smaller than the height of these dimensional strips, we fold it over and kind of gently press it. It doesn't make the connection. So for this, because the dimensionals are thicker than the battery, the connection happens when you press it. So it's a little press function right there. Isn't that awesome? All right, so then the last one of the last things is basically adding your lighthouse on top. Adding your lighthouse on top. Uh, before that, you do want to erase your guidelines. Um, I mean, otherwise they're going to show up. I mean, depending on what ink color you did for your water, it might not show up as much. But this is the time to do it before you glue the top on. Okay. so cool okay okay so we got our lines gone all right and then we're going to do our lighthouse on top now the other thing I'll recommend too is before you put the lighthouse on top line it up and press it and see if you like where the light is um, if for whatever reason you put the light down lower than where it's going to sit you can adjust and move the whole thing up or down and just trim uh, the excess that you have uh, before adhering it to the card base. So you can make an adjustment that way um, without having to try to reposition everything. Okay, so to adhere this to that, I'm going to use the little foam dimensional strips again. Uh, these are great because this is the same height that we just used for the battery. So it'll keep everything nice and level. The other thing I like about this is you can trim it and do a little strip right kind of in the middle of your lines and hold up that lighthouse so it doesn't look fluffy. Okay, there's one right there. So at least one top, one there. Peel that off. And then line it up and stick it down. Just like that. Okay, you can test it. There we go, still good. All right, then we're gonna flip it over. And I like to do another little uh, bit of the dimensional strip just on that little corner. And you wanna just use your regular glue on the back of the rest of this. Just like that. If you're using um, the snail or any of the pull, just be very careful not to push too hard on all the circuit pieces. All right. And then we're going to take our card base, and fold it up, and adhere it to our card. Just giving a nice little border edge, just like that. Oh, I didn't take off the backing. <laughs> it won't stick. There we go. Okay. Ta-da! So such a simple and quick and easy card. Now the last thing is uh, if you want to add that sentiment uh, for the front, you just stamp it out, any, any of these, on your Whisper White in the Knight of Navy, and then cut and then just add a blue border, whatever size you prefer, on the back. Now, I want to also show you another variation that you can do with this card. Well, I have a couple variations. So, you can do the lighthouse in a different color, and you can do a different card base. So, for this one, this is um, another... Uh, actually, this is Sahara Sand card base, and this is a Crumb Cake um, Sandy Beach. So, you can do just different bases and different lighthouse colors is one option. Um, 
And this is one with a uh, marina mist sky. So, right there. And the other thing that you can do, which is another kind of fun variation, is you can sponge the sky and do a brayered ombre sunset effect. So for this one, I did uh, so saffron, um, calypso coral, a little um, red, and a little razzleberry, and just kind of used my sponges, started the lightest color, and then added on to that. Um, and then this lighthouse was stamped with the archival black instead of the gray. So it just makes it a bit darker, and it's just a different look. Same thing, still got the lighthouse. I just think the lighthouse doesn't show up as bright with the, um, the dark versus the gray, the black versus the gray. Okay? So I hope you guys like this video. I make lots of lighthouse cards. This is an awesome, awesome set. You can do a lot with it. Here's a couple other non-light-up cards made with this set. So if you like this video, don't forget to like and also subscribe to not miss any of my future videos. So thanks everybody for watching. All right, goodbye.